Hello, I'm Mark Neva and I'm a media technician at a college and today I'm going to be telling you how to get a video signal from a Canon EOS 750D to a Blackmagic A10 Television Studio HD. Uh, yes, although we're working with a 750D, it uh, should follow a similar principle because um, I've already also got um, the same thing working through other DSLR cameras. Okay, so the first thing I did um, when receiving the Blackmagic device was I first noticed that actually there's no power cable. You would think that'd be for minimum uh, for Blackmagic would provide, uh, so you can actually power it out of box, but no. Although, although actually I did manage to uh, use an Ethernet uh, power um, power over Ethernet cable uh, to be able to get it working. But uh, down the line, I knew that I wasn't going to be always ne near a Ethernet socket. So I got a power, a standard power cable like you would uh, say a back of a desktop base unit um, to be able to power it up. And so once I had that, I had also ordered a mini HDMI to HDMI cable to connect it to the Canon EOS 750D. But one thing I noticed was it didn't, um, you would think it'd be as simple as plug and play, but no. Um, so I went to their website, Blackmagic Forum. I also went to, um, I actually phoned them up directly. And I also, um, also actually um, phoned up a video hire place that also owned a Blackmagic. Um, because I actually thought maybe it was specific, this specific device that was maybe faulty. So I wanted to check whether theirs worked and this one doesn't. Um, so anyway, all of these different places, um, the thing that kept on coming up was that it needed to match the recording settings on the Canon camera uh, or DSLR camera to the Blackmagic device. So I ended up um, Match, uh, changing the settings on the Blackmagic device to match the recording settings which was shooting at 1080p at 25 frames per second and even when I had done that it still wasn't working so I was getting quite annoyed at this point um, it, it just didn't seem to want to work um, so then Sun also had a suggestion A to double check whether it works through an external monitor like this field trucks monitor we've got here and it was actually down going down this direction that I finally got signal so what I ended up doing was I actually connected the Canon camera to the monitor monitor to the Blackmagic and through kind of tricking it um, tricking for signal, it finally, and uh, matching for settings to the monitor, it, I ended up finally getting it to work. Um, so then I thought, okay, so this is going to be annoying because I'm going to have to have a monitor for every single camera I have in my multi camera setup. And especially as I work in education at a college, uh, it's going to be a health and safety nightmare. And so I ideally wanted to directly um, connect it straight to the Blackmagic device. So I actually ended up stumbling by this by accident. And it was when you first turn the monitor on with the Canon connected, it actually comes up top right in the monitor on the monitor um, what the settings are. And so that is when I found out it's actually displaying um, at 1080i at 50. And so that was um, when things clicked and I worked out how to kind of get my head around why it wasn't working. It's because for some reason, rather than actually matching for recording settings, it's actually matching for settings on the monitor itself, okay? So once you, uh, another thing to get, get your head around is when you record, you tend to record with frames per second, at frames per second. And monitors tend to go over a um, work in hertz rather than frames per second. 
and so therefore that's when it says 1080 i at 50 that it's hertz rather than frames per second it hurts is actually how many images uh, how many lines get drawn a second so it's the speed or frequency the monitor works at so once you get your head around that I managed to take uh, from the cables out and directly connect the Canon to the Blackmagic device and I actually managed to get some signal so I was very very relieved at this point so so yes, so I finally got one camera working and this is when I thought, okay, next step would be to include more than one camera to get multi-camera set up. And that's when I hit another problem. It, it seems like whenever I solve one problem, I hit another. And that is when I actually uh, found out that you need to have the same model camera between all of the multi-cameras. This is very annoying because we at this college actually have quite a few different models. We have a 750D, 200D, 1300D and 1200D. And so we want to ideally make use of all, all of those different cameras. But instead, this Blackmagic device limits itself to only working uh, with the same model at once. Um, so it turns out that we're not going to be able to make use of the best camera we've got here because uh, we only have so many um, we've got two um, but we want to work with say a three or four multi-camera setup so in the end we're going to have to work with a 1300D setup um, so which will limit us on quality which is a pity because this shoots of, um, so yes yeah, so this generally will produce a better quality better image um, but we won't be able to make use of this but in 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 the long run um, or at least the main thing is that we're going to be able to teach the students here how to do a multi-camera setup even if it's not the best quality uh, the next thing I also found out or trying to get my head around at the moment so if you do know the answer to this is that at the moment it's replicating whatever is on the monitor rather than what it's actually recording. So the disadvantage of this is it's showing, uh, especially with the 1300D, it's cropping for image. Whereas the 750D is not so bad, it doesn't crop for image, but it's still showing, say, for aperture, for shutter speed and ISO and all the different settings that is on display. And so that's why, ideally, I just want a clean output. So if you do know the answer, please do let me know. Um, Otherwise, uh, when I do find the answer, I'll be doing another video. And I'm hoping to do quite a few of these videos to show the sort of progress I've made and to the point where hopefully I'm teaching students uh, how to use the multi-camera setup and all of the different obstacles I've uh, overcome to get to that point. Okay? But if you also have any questions or any technical difficulties you have hit, um, getting, uh, trying to get your black magic to work, um, then please do let me know in the comment section, and I'll try to get back to you and trying to aunt, answer your questions to the best of my abilities. Um, and yeah, so thank you very much for watching. And also, if you want to um, follow uh, for my channel, please do and try to um, subscribe it so you actually get notifications uh, whenever I post a new video. So I'm actually doing quite a few different videos. I'm doing like travel logs, of uh, travel vlogs, and I'm also um, trying to do a Bridges on the River Thames series. And as well, I want to do quite a few sort of technical based uh, series as well, because I'm a media technician. I have the advantage of owning or so getting to use a lot of the different pieces of equipment. So I want to do how-to videos. I want to do any sort of problems that I've overcome, and just also maybe cool effects, maybe an After Effects or Premiere. Um, so yeah, I'm also teaching. Um, I'm also starting to do a teaching course. So um, maybe I can it'd be a good excuse for me to implement some of my methods uh, that I've learnt. And
and yeah, just be interesting to see my, see my journey um, and it'd be nice to get feedback along the way. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.